Open. Okay. Right. So after yesterday's laugh a minute comedy with with the good old Porter, um, we bring ourselves to um, the death of, of Duncan being revealed on stage. Um, oh, you can't see. I haven't shared my screen properly yet. I am. Yeah, you have, sir. I can see it. Ah, they can't see it though. Ha! Oh. But they will in a minute. Right. So, yeah, that's what you should have. Yeah. Now, yes. If only AC12 had been around. You know, it's time. I think we don't just need to look at this picture. We need we need some a little bit of background to get us into this one, don't we? What what is AC12? You don't know what AC12 is. <laughs> you don't you, you don't know. It's it's a word from it's a word from um, our sponsors first clearly. AQA, yeah, which, which is highly appropriate. Um, aren't they? Aha, uh -huh. so. Don't be too loud. Yeah. You know, and, and what were they interested in in, in AC12? Fighting crime, fighting misdemeanors all over the place, weren't they? Um, sadly, it doesn't seem to be working. So, yeah, not wanting to go, is it? What is it? Ah, yes. We have a bit of sound now. We have a bit of sound. So, so far, what we know. Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, committed a crime. They think they have hidden it. They think they have schemed away so well. But at this moment in time, we are about to find out. This crime is about to be uncovered. And I want you to look at two prime suspects as if you were either Steve Arnott or Ted Hastings of AC12. No, he doesn't belong to AC12. And uh, I want you to focus on how they behave as um, the murder is revealed by another character on the play. Both Lady Macbeth and Macbeth are on stage. Do they give themselves away through their body language? Do they reveal anything through what they say? And is there anybody that you would like to have a bit of a view with? Clear? Right, so we'll just get rid of them now. And we're going to have to have some acting again, I'm afraid. I know this, this cheers everybody up having to do acting. Um, so, we will need Lennox. Who was Lennox yesterday? Who, who got to... Ah, Leon, do you want to, do you want to remain the, the, the faithful Lennox? You got a few more lines today. Thank you, I'll take that as a yes. Um, then we need somebody... I mean, what great line Macduff has. Oh, horror, horror, horror. And I need somebody who could deliver that line with great, great panache, with, um, you know... Give a sense of, you know, that they feel that they have looked upon the most unsightly thing going. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking Nathan will make a good Macduff. So we'll have Macduff. Um, I'm going to be Macbeth because I've got the accent. <laughs> I've decided. Yeah. Um, Lady Macbeth, who would make a good Lady Macbeth at this point? Who am I thinking? Christian, Lady Macbeth. Yes. And then I need a faithful banco. A faithful banco. Name Macbeth. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a cool character. It is such a cool character. It is. Kiva, could you be banco, please? Thank you. Stop your moaning. Oh, then we need a Malcolm. We need a Malcolm. We need Malcolm and Donald Bain, Duncan's sons. Duncan's sons. <laughs> Tom, you can be Malcolm. Tom can be Malcolm. And, and Kimmy, you can be Donald Bain. It's, it's, it's the lesson. 
Duncan's death revealed. OK, we got that. We got that. Let's romp through this now. OK, so Lennox, if you can. You remember we had a very unseasonable night the night before the, the chimneys were falling down. Everything was terrible. So Lennox, can you begin with my young remembrance? Or, or my young remembrance, even. My young remembrance is not parallel. So Macduff re-enters and he, he he throws his hands up in the air and he he disclaims. That's you, Nathan. Oh horror, horror, horror! Tongue your heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Indeed, what's the matter, Macduff? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. No sacrilegious murder hath broken the Lord's appointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. Yeah, that's good. What is it you see? The life. Majesty, approach the chamber and destroy your sight. Gordon, do not bid me speak. See and then speak yourselves. So Macbeth and Lennox pop off. It's still you, Macduff. You're shouting the alarm to the castle now. It was just where you were. A week, a week. A week, a week. Ring the alarm bell. Murder and treason. Banquo and Donald Bain. Mark him awake. Shake off this downy sleep. Death's counterfeit. Yeah, and then on 47, and keep going, Macduff. And look on death itself, up, up, and see the great, the great human's image, Malcolm, Banco, as from your graves rise up and walk like sprites, sprites, mm -hmm. to encounter into this horror, ring the bell. The bell rings, and enter Lady Macbeth. What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls the parley, the sleepers of the house speaks to you? Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. So enter Banquo, and it's still you, Macduff. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Well, alas, what in our house? <laughs> Too cruel anywhere, dear Duff, I prithee contradict myself and say it, is he not so? So Macduff, Macbeth, Lennox, and Ross all re enter, and Macbeth, that'll be me. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I'd have lived a blessed time. For from this instant, there's nothing serious in immortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and mere lees has left this vault to brag of. <laughs> Donald Bain. Donald Bain. It's just like the Goes Wrong show, isn't it? Where they, they oh, try so to... It's so good, isn't it? Yeah. Come on, Kimmy, it's there. Yeah. Um, shh, you are and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Malcolm. Whom? Whom? I mean, the pair of you. Your dad's just dead. He's been murdered. And the pair of you can't give up. Flying monkeys about it. Yeah, Dad's dead. So what? Lennox. So is this chamber, as it seems, have done. Their hands, the hands and faces were as badged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh yeah, I do repent of my fury. That I did kill them. Whoops. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral when a moment? No man. The expedition of my violent love outran the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his <laughs> gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature. For ruin's wasteful entrance, there the murderers, steeped in the colours of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart, courage to make love's known? Wow, that, that, in case you didn't work out, that was Lady Macbeth fainting. Oh. <laughs> oh, Macduff. Macduff. Why do 
we hold our tongues, but most may claim this argument for ours. Oi. It's on the flipping screen. <laughs> Auger, in an auger hole. Auger hole may rush and see them. Let us away, our tears are long. Yeah. Not us long, sorry, but one of us may be. Oh, no. Ah, sorry. It should be the next bit. It should be down just below it. Upon the foot of motion, 51. Sorry, I've doubled a page there. My apologies. On the screen. On the screen, on the screen, Tom, on the screen, on the screen. The stagger in men's mouths, the name blood, the name blood. Malcolm. It was just Malcolm, so it is the other page. Oh, it was the other page, was it? Oh, my apologies. Oh, so let's look to the lady. <gasps> right. I, I thought I'd double jumped it. Banco. Yeah, that's where we are. And so do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. All together? One, two, three. Well contented. Exit all back, Malcolm and Dong Beam. So, Malcolm? What will you do that we consult with them to show an unfelt sorrow in the night? It's the false man that we found the angel. Well, yeah, that, that's a place, it's a country just across the water. It's yeah. an island that separates the two countries of both safe and where we are. Uh, the daggers in men's smiles and their blood and they were born. This major shaft that shot hath not yet lighted, uh, and our safe, safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, to force and let us not be dainted of leaving taking, but shift away their warrant in that theft. Which steals itself when there's no mercy left. Wow. Round of applause. What, 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 what a moving scene. What a moving scene we have here. Yeah. Cool. Right. First thing I want you to do. Um, yeah. If you go back to the top. Uh, under your little AC12 picture there. I want you to jot down. What are the three most intriguing things that are played out in that scene? Yeah, just three things that really strike you about the behaviour of people at the crime scene here. You know, how have people reacted? Have they reacted the way you expect them to? Have they not reacted the way you expect them to? Is there anything that makes you think, ooh, that's a bit strange? That's a bit peculiar. Just jot it down now on your one note. You can just bullet point and boop, boop, boop. Doesn't have to be complete and proper sentences. Music to everybody's ears. Yeah, we all got something written down. At least one thing. I know you can write you. I'm just going to ask you to give me one thing you're thinking mm, out of the three you've got. That's been a bit unusual. So, Ellie. Yeah, because you're just sitting there, arms folded, so relaxed. I'm thinking, right? You know, if I come to you first, you you can't you can't say you can't say. Well, there you are. What did Lady Macbeth do? What did Christian do so well? Why did she faint? There's your question. (laughs) 
Anybody care to hazard a guess why she fainted? Leon? I beg your pardon? Rephrase that. Shocked. Cover your ears, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's that idea because it, Macbeth does get a tad talkative at this point, doesn't he? Eh, running away with itself. Hold your horses there, Matthew. I'm going to work my way around the room. Yeah, don't you don't you worry. But yeah, I mean, again, it is, I mean, you know, she does it right at that moment. She goes, ooh. And everybody, of course, everybody looks to her. Let's stay on Lady Macbeth, shall we? Anybody get anything down that they think, well, that's a wee bit strange. Nobody get anything else with Lady Macbeth. There should be at least two things I think you should be asking about Lady Macbeth here. You'd be useless in AC12. Ted Hastings would sack you. Um, Christian, what have you got then as something of interest? You've got Lady Macbeth. Anything, no, but I, 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 I've, I've guessed that the silence in the room means that nobody else has picked up anything. Macbeth's passion. Right. <laughs> Why? What, what, what is it about Macbeth's passion? I don't know, he's having big old paragraphs or dialogue um, speaking about Duncan and how like, great he was and how horrible the man who killed him. Yeah. Okay, good. George? Uh, I got when Macbeth accidentally said, um, that I didn't kill them. Well, and that was no accident. He 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 just freely admits to it. I've killed the grooms. You know, killed them. Oh, he says he killed them. Killed, killed the guards. Yeah, and he has killed them. He's he, he's. And that's a good one to pick up. He thinks that he's trying to frame the guards. Everyone he has. No, they don't. Um, all right, but, all right, why, why can't they ask? You know, it's framing the guards, yeah, but also, also, you know, by killing the guards, what does he not allow to happen? So, yeah, that's what should have happened. They, they, they should have got, I'm just, I'm just, for those of you who are in the know of, of your uh, line of duty, that's a, a, an offline quote. Um, but I mean, again, isn't it? He's taking the prime suspects away there. He, he, he's not allowing them to be interviewed. Because what would they say if they were interviewed? Didn't do it. And I can't remember doing that. I was blind drunk. I don't know what the heck's happened. I went to sleep and woke up. Natalie. What struck you as being unusual here? Oh, there's so much more to be said now. There's so much more to be said, as will be proved by Leon. Or maybe not. Nothing else? Nothing else unusual here? Very quiet, yeah. Moving on to Nathan then. Nathan, and you want to add to our, our line of uh, inquiries here? I think when I was really felt sad, we were just angry about it. Well, then, there's a lot of anger, yeah. Yeah, and you see, maybe that sort of you know, sense of, you know, sorrow. Why no sorrow, yeah. Kiva? Say that again, sorry. Right. Mm. Um, 
Tom? No, okay. Thea, anything you want to add? No, okay. Semin, anything you want to add? Anyone add to our list of uh, questions to be asked? No? Okay. Kemi? Oh, dear. Why the brothers went to different places? Ah, well, there's a reason for that, yeah. Hmm. I mean, to run away would suggest what? Yeah, wouldn't it? Mm. Matthew? No. Isaac? What do you mean, what? What do you mean, what? How rude. Yeah. Anything to add to the list? No? Oh. Nicole? No. Well, do you know what? None of you would have a job in later life in the police force. You're not being very perceptive, are you? Oh, man, I'll talk through this corner. <laughs> uh, it's a crime. It's a... Oh, oh, Lottie, sorry. Sorry, Lottie. Yeah. Did I? My apologies to you and my apologies to Lottie. Lottie, what do you want to say? <laughs> um, Personally, that um, Lady McNair was the first one to arrive when the alarm, like, went out. Yeah. And we're heading into the right territory now when you say that, you know, she, she's quick to arrive. You think, well, that's, that's a, a very close, quick to the scene. Um, look how she reacts. Look how she re Remember. Remember, she knows everything. How about that for her kind of reaction? How does she sound? Sarcastic. Well, I wouldn't say sarcastic, but... How does she sound? You know, what's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley? She's she, what's she complaining about? Being woken up. The inconvenience of being woken up. Okay, so she's, you could say she's playing a part, you know, she's kind of masking, you know, I know nothing, nothing to see here, you know. Um, and um, carries on, and M M Macduff then says, oh, gentle lady, it is not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Um, he said, he, he's going down a kind of sort of hysterical route, saying, oh, you, you know, you, you're too nice a person, you know, and you're, and you're a woman, and you know, you, women shouldn't hear such things. It is too foul for your ears. But the minute Banco runs out stage, he can't help himself. He goes, oh, Banco, Banco, our royal master's mother. And then, and then again, look at Lady Macbeth's reaction. What's she worried about? <laughs> Who's in the house? It's like a game show. Who's in the house? No, it's not who's in the house. Yeah. Well, no. Bank Macduff has just said to Banco, my God, the king is dead. Murdered, most foully. Lady Macbeth goes, what? Oh dear, in our house? What's she worried about? No. But it's in her house. Oh my God! You know what happened? Well, but he stay once, and what happens? Goes and gets himself murdered. Nobody will come here for drinks and nibbles anymore. It is quite revealing. Oh, sorry, Lottie. I said she's possibly worried about. She's possibly worried about her reputation. Yeah, that is it, exactly. That's what seems to come across here, that she is worried about reputation. No. 
Yeah, that is the only thing that she appears to be worried about there. Worried about her reputation. Okay. I think that's quite you know important. And then you did mention others have mentioned here about um, the, the, the two brothers, and they do reveal because um, they say there's a reason why they depart one to Ireland, one to England. Why does one go to Ireland and one go to England? Why? Why don't they both just go to the same place? No. No. Hey. Maybe they both want to be king and want to get their sights on, on expand. What, what, what did they both understand has just happened in Macbeth's house? Their, their father, a king, has been assassinated. So who, 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 they'll, they'll kind of work out. They're next. So if they're together, how easy is it to wipe out the one family? It's easy as cake. It's easy as cake, isn't it? However, if one's in one location and one's in another location, it's harder to wipe out that family. Yeah. So they work out we've got to get here and we've got we've got to be we've got to be apart so that it makes it more difficult for whoever has done this deed to get to us. And then they come out with this and it's um Don Bain comes out with this great line. There is daggers and men's smiles. Ooh. Does that kind of tap into a theme, an idea of this play? There's daggers and men smile. What are they? What are they saying when they say that? Or what is Donald Donald Bain implying when he says that? This is the fairest foul and foul affair idea is it's being revisited, isn't it? This is false face. Fair face must um, hide what false heart doth know or show sort of thing, isn't it? That kind of idea, you know, be like the flower and the serpent underneath it. Yeah, all of these things um, are being, it's about the world turned upside down. Who do you trust? And they know that someone who is, in theory, loyal to the king has killed them. They cannot be trusted. But again, you think about it, you know, as an image, quite a wonderful image, that idea of daggers and men's smiles. And I thought, do you know what? Such a great line, such a great line really deserves a song in Macbeth the musical. I thought, you know, what could Malcolm and Donald Bain be singing to each other at this 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 moment in time? It would be something that would really sum up. And I thought to myself, there is such a song that sums up this sense of friends being treacherous, trying to get one over you, and literally doing anything to get on in life. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have our next song from Macbeth the Musical to sum up this kind of theme. I know, well, folk are being a little bit blinded by sun. George, do you want to pull the blind so that Nathan can now um, stop squinting his one eye? Sorry, Nathan, I'm off. Yeah? So, I might need to swap screens again while we get a word from our... Oops. A word from our sponsors. Hang on, Lottie, I'll just change it for you. Where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? Oh, it's here. Yeah. 
Do, 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 do. Another one from our sponsors. No. No. Skip ad. Yes, please. 1972, this one. 1972. No, it's not Michael Bublé. What's his name? Bublé. 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 Read the lyrics here as they come up on screen and think how appropriate. This is Malcolm and Donald Bain singing to each other about what's happened to their dad. And as you can see, they've got a bit of soul, these two Scottish lads. Plenty intro as they do a bit of, you know, grooving on the stage. They're getting ready to go to England and to Ireland. Barbara, a Viking woman. She's now. How appropriate is that for what has just happened to the dad? Literally, what Macbeth has done to Duncan. I think it's going to work, don't you? I think mean, it's going to really work, you know. I think they've been to their father's house, and what has Macbeth and his lady wife done? Stabbed them. Oh, and then we leave Malcolm and Donald Bain to their private misery. Oh, good what? No, that was in the lyric. Quick, for us. Let's get Lottie back to our screen. Not just the register, which is a bit boring. Okay, now let, let's just backtrack a little bit of this because um, obviously there's some things we need to come out. Um, so we have this um, from Macduff, you know, his, you know, his tripling of horror, 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 you know, as this whole terrible thing that has happened. And um, Macduff voices what's in everybody's mind here, this idea, it is sacrilegious murder. It's the Lord's anointed temple. So this is just not the killing of an individual. This is God's anointed man on earth that has been taken off here. So again, reinforcing the idea here about you know a crime which will damn you to hell for those who is who has um, committed this act. So um, and again, lots of uh, you know it's Macduff that really leads um, the sort of the public wailing. Um, and, and uh, emotions here, you know, it's approach the chamber, destroy your sight. So this, when he says destroy your sight, what is he saying about it? if you look at the dead body of the king, what's going to happen to you? Not that you'll die, but what's he saying that there is? 
Once you've seen that image, what will, where, will, where will it be? What will happen? Always in your head. It's always in your head. You know, you can unthink. You know, once you've seen it, it's there. It's seared. That image is seared in the brain. Yeah? Whoops. Don't want it. Is it green? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that kind of idea. And of course, Gorgon. Who was the Gorgon? Not a bit of cheese. Yeah. Who was the Gorgon? Gorgon was also known as who? What was our, what was our other name? It was Medusa, yeah. You know, so if you think Medusa there, yeah. And if you look at Medusa, you are turned to stone, that kind of idea. So again, is that, is that a sense as well, isn't it? You know, that not only is the image seared in your brain, but you know, your emotions are going to be shot to pieces. They're going to be destroyed by such a horrific sight. Yeah. Oops, not true. You know, quite literally, you know, you won't feel anything again after that. Your emotions will be deadened, yeah, because it has been such a terrible thing to witness. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so um, we have Macduff continuing with the, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up. Um, let Lady Macbeth, and funnily enough, um, Lady Macbeth, speaks in a way that we recall from before. What's the business? Remember, who used the phrase business before and when? Who else has used that phrase? Business. Macbeth. When? Yes. And what did he call it? He called it a what business? Yes. You know, and it's almost, I mean, the one that appears to be almost really giving the game away is Macbeth. You know, he has, his tongue does kind of run away with him uh, and he can't help that. But there's other ones as well. He's look at the little subtle things where Lady Macbeth is, is involved here. Even she can't help herself from using some of these euphemism that she and her husband have shared in the past when describing, you know, do we kill the king? You know, the deed is done and all that sort of thing. You know, put this put this business into my hands. That was Lady Macbeth, wasn't it? Yeah, um, and, and so there's echoes of elsewhere in the play. Um, we've done that. And uh, again, it's that kind of euphemism, and it stops her from kind of, you know, mentioning, uh, giving anything, uh, she thinks giving anything away. And then they want to, you know, Macduff wanting to protect her, as I said here. And then Macbeth. What's that first sort of outpouring from Macbeth all about. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant, there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn and the mere lees is left. This vault to brag of. What is he commenting on there? Anybody want to stab a guess? What's he talking about? Think about this, right? He's saying he's coming back and he's still feigning innocence at the moment, isn't he? He's still sort of feigning um, 
pretend horror. You know, it's nothing. It's nothing like Macduff's reaction. It's quite what in comparison. Can you hear? Sorry. Isn't it? This is quite calm and measured. Um, it comes across as almost a little bit like a, you know, once it would be spoken at a funeral, you know, to honour the dead. So I think by the, and, and by that time, everybody's had the ability to process, you know, the death and sort of come to terms with it. But as an initial reaction, he's gone to the chamber as well, you know, Mac Macduff has come out and just gone and thrown his hands in the young man. Horror, horror, horror. I can't believe it. You don't look in there. You know, oh, your, your sight will be blasted. Do not look. Beth, oh, but. And again, it's all about himself, isn't it? Had I but died an hour before. And it's about opportunity for him. Give me this chance. I had led. A blessed time. So the focus is on himself, not the king. And he sees this and he, he talks about it, you know, I've been given an opportunity, one last chance to do a good thing for the king. Yeah. I want you to think about this sort of, um, later on in, in Act 5, Scene 1. Um, we will get to the point where Lady Macbeth shuffles off this mortal coil. I know that's a bit of a plot spoiler, sorry. <laughs> um, but I compare it here because, again, he, he, he's talking about as well the quality of life. And he says, you know, now that the king is gone, the king is dead, you know, it's like a fine wine and we've we'll got to the dregs of the bottle now. There's nothing really good. Nothing of substance is left. You know, he's just saying, you know, that's it. Well, from here on in, life isn't going to be that great. He does a similar kind of thing when Lady Macbeth dies. But look at the strength, the quality. You can see that it's heartfelt as against this one, where he is playing lip service. I think here yeah, we, we get a sense that you know, he, he's going through the motions here. He knows what he should do, but he, he's, he, he's projecting himself in a very specific role. OK. Right there. We need to leave it for today, mes amis. And we shall finish this off tomorrow. OK. Yeah. And then we'll find that, ba that Banco has thought, aye, thou hast played most foully for it. Okay, Lottie. Yes. Yeah, okay. And see you tomorrow. Okay. okay bye.